Welcome to the Let's Get Vulnerable podcast. It's your host, Dr. Morgan, and today's episode is a special treat for you. I took this from one of my group calls that I do, reserved typically only for my clients. So this is from inside of the Empowered, Secure, Loved program. And this call is really focused on mindset, being in the energy of surrender. It's all the valuable woo-woo stuff that I like to offer up to my clients. And I know that there's so many of you who are listening to this show who will also benefit from this call. Not only that, there is a juicy meditation, okay? This meditation is one that you're going to want to make sure you can be in a calm, quiet place. For the love of God, don't do this meditation while you're driving, okay? I don't, I would need you to be safe. This is an emotional meditation that's going to bring up a lot. So this, this episode might be one that you come back to again and again. It's one of those that will really help you get in that energy of attracting what you want instead of trying and pushing and making things happen, right? It's going to help you get in that energy of surrender. So I hope you enjoy. And if you like this episode, please shoot me a DM on Instagram at Dr. Morgan Coaching, Dr. Morgan Coaching. Shoot me a DM and let me know what you think of it. All right. Enjoy. Let's dive in to working on our surrender. And I'm going to talk about the power of intention as well. Before we do that, let's do a little meditation, shall we? I don't know how your week's going, but maybe you would benefit from some meditation. So let's go ahead and do that together. I'm going to have you close your eyes, get comfortable, roll your shoulders back, take some deep breaths all the way down into your stomach, Ah, let go of anything you've been holding on to. Just be present here right now. Hmm. I want to invite you to imagine that you are in a field of the most beautiful flowers. Pick your, pick your favorite flowers. Maybe they're purple, lavender, um, sunflowers, maybe it's roses, I don't know, but tulips, whatever your favorite flower is, I just want you to go there. You have the perfect temperature outside. There's a slight tiny breeze and you have the sun shining on your face ever so gently and you love feeling the warmth of the sun hit your skin. And just imagine yourself there deep breaths into your stomach, let it go. I want to invite you to imagine feeling loved. See if you can feel that feeling in your body. Maybe you feel tingles on your shoulders or Maybe it's a warm, fuzzy feeling somewhere in your body. But what does it feel like to be loved? See if you can feel it in your body. You're in the field with your favorite flowers and you're feeling, what does it feel like to be loved, to be adored, to be cherished, to know deep in your bones that there is no one like you on this planet, that you are uniquely you. And you have this deep feeling of knowing that you are so worthy of love. Notice what comes up for you. Do you do you see any colors associated with this feeling? Is there a bright light of some sort of color? Is there some sort of emotion? 
Is there a relief that comes? Just be really curious about your experience as you're soaking up these feelings of being deeply loved and adored and cherished. And now I want to invite you to imagine that you're being approached by your inner child. And this version of you, maybe she's five years old, four years old, six years old, it doesn't matter the age, but the young inner child version of you, she's approaching you. And I don't know exactly what it is that she's carrying, but she seems upset. Imagine it's the inner child version of you that experienced some kind of wounding or some kind of hurt. Maybe it was that she never felt special or that she never felt validated in her emotions or just that she didn't have the attention that she needed to thrive but she seems sad as she's walking towards you. And I just want you to imagine that you are embracing her as she's coming to you, that you are picking her up and you are embracing her and you're giving her all of that love that you just felt in your body and you're wrapping her up in love and she can take it in and accept it. And maybe you're whispering something in her ear. What is it that she needs to hear? Does she need to know you are loved? You are worthy of love. You've always been enough. It wasn't your fault. What does she need to hear? I want you to just whisper in her ear, whatever she needs to hear and give her the biggest hug. And now I wanna invite you to imagine that the two of you are walking through the field, you're holding hands in the field of your favorite flowers, and you're looking down at your inner child and she's smiling up at you. And you know that she feels safe, she feels loved, she feels adored, and she knows that you have her back. You are there for her. I want to invite you to really take in that image and know that that is the work that you are doing, that you are learning how to hold that inner child with so much love and acceptance and patience and kindness. And when you're ready, I want you to remind yourself you can come back to this anytime. You can always connect to this feeling of love, to this feeling of being adored, of being so, so worthy of love. You can always come back to this at any time and you can always connect to your inner child I want to invite you to remember this is yours to come back to. Take some final deep breaths. <clears throat> Let it go. Whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Come back to the room. And I hope that you really enjoyed that meditation and that you realize that that is the kind of work that we're doing here where we're really learning how to embody that safe, loved feeling. And we're learning how to give it to the parts of ourselves that have been wounded or that have been hurt. So I hope you enjoyed that meditation. And I want to transition now. I want to talk about ego and then surrender and being in the energy of allowing AKA the power of intention. 
So first off, I wrote this down here and I'll, and I'll tell you, I, I just want you to know that the information I'm sharing with you comes from Dr. Wayne Dyer, Joe Dispenza. It also comes from Gabby Bernstein, all of the kind of spiritual leaders who have written books. There's so much overlap in what they teach. Abraham Hicks, right? I could name so many, but I have got my information from there. So I just want to say that. And if you are looking for an awesome intro to spirituality book, some of you've heard me say this, but I highly recommend Super Attractor by Gabrielle Bernstein. I think that's a wonderful intro book. And if you're like, okay, Dr. Morgan, I already read that. Then my next recommendation for you would be Dr. Wayne Dyer and actually the book, The Power of Intention, which is available on audiobook as well. So The Power of Intention, if you want to go a little deeper and super attractor if you're intro. Okay. So what are the six ego beliefs? These are the things that keep us separate from surrendering and keep us stuck. Here's the six beliefs. The first one is this, and these are identity beliefs. Okay. The first one is I am what I have. My possessions define me. So you've attached your worthiness to your possessions. The second belief is I am what I do. My achievements define me. So you've attached your worthiness to your productivity and what you do. The third ego belief is I am what other people think of me. My reputation defines me. How many of us get stuck in that one? It is not a good place to be. And then the fourth one is I am separate from everyone. My body defines me as alone. So being separate from others and not being connected. The fifth ego belief is I'm separate from everything that is missing in my life. My life space is disconnected from what I desire. And then the sixth ego belief is I'm separate from God. You could say I'm separate from the universe. I'm separate from the creator, right? Um, and people also have associating beliefs with this one. Sometimes they believe that my life depends on God's assessment of my worthiness, um, that I have to be a certain way to be worthy of God's love. Um, and what I want you to realize about these beliefs, right? The ego beliefs, they keep us disconnected from our worthiness. They don't allow us to step into I am enough. I've always been enough, right? They, they create a barrier between being loved and being enough. So those are the six beliefs that if you have them, I want you to start work, working on letting them go. So I'll just say them real quick. One more time. The six ego beliefs. I am what I have. I am what I do. I am what other people think of me. I am separate from everyone. I am separate from all that is missing in my life. And then the final one is I'm separate from God, the universe, the creator. So as we're working on healing and we're working on our mindset and connecting to our spiritual life, one of the things we need to realize is this, that the sooner we can say, I am not separate from what I desire, that what I desire is available to me. What I desire is already on its way to me. And also finding the ways that what we desire is already in our life. So love, let's talk about romantic love and love in general, right? If I know that I am desiring love and I'm wanting a partner one of the worst things I can do is I can focus on, oh, I just want a partner. Oh, I just want to be loved. Oh, I just want X, Y, Z. Um, the more we're in that wanting energy, we're seeing ourselves as separate instead of, of course, it's available to me. Of course, it's on its way to me, right? So when we're working on attracting our ideal emotionally available partner, 
I want you noticing how love is already in your life. It's already there. What are the ways that you feel loved? We just did it in a meditation. I had you embody feeling loved, right? What are the ways that you already have love? What's interesting is when we are quote unquote manifesting, bringing in the things that we want, it's helpful to have the evidence of those things. This is why vision boards are so powerful, right? You have images of the things that you want. Um, you can talk to some people who are really big on like, oh, if you want to attract a partner, make sure you have double sinks in your home. Make sure you've cleared out closet space for your partner. They're really big on create the space. And I also believe that. So really intentionally focusing on how do I allow it into my life now instead of acting as if it's separate so for you, I want you to think about what does it look like to allow the energy of being loved, being desired, being wanted, allow that into your life now. I want you to remember this. Love is an energy. It's an emotional state. And the only way that we can really receive it and receive more of it is when we already feel it for ourselves and we know what it feels like in our body. So one creative thing I'm going to give you is homework. I want all of you to do this. I want you to practice on taking, taking yourself on a date, taking yourself to go do something super fun where you are feeling cared for, you're feeling loved, you're feeling adored, and you're allowing yourself to receive that energy of love. Okay. So it's not just about the action. It's about how do I be in the energetic state? How do I be in that emotional state? You want to think about I'm creating the way that I want to feel in my ideal relationship. I'm creating that now. I'm creating it now. I'm not waiting for a partner. I'm creating that feeling of being loved, adored, appreciated, of being seen for who I am. I'm creating that feeling now, creating it now. So I want that to be your homework, go out, take yourself on a date, show up for yourself in a way where you can really feel loved and adored. So when we're in this place and we're being in this energy, we have to do something called allowing and allowing is where anytime you start pushing, you start trying to make things happen. Maybe you're, you're in this energy of why hasn't it happened yet? You're pissed off, you're frustrated, whatever. Anytime you're there, you want to bring yourself back to the energy of, of course, it's on its way to me. I already have love in my life. Of course, it's on its way. Of course, my partner is going to come and multiply the love that I already have. And being in that energetic state, we know, okay, like attracts like. This is actually proven in science. This is like the science of manifesting. I'm reading a book right now that's all about the actual neuroscience of manifesting, where when we are on an energetic plane, we bring more of that energy into our life, right? So this can also be said for when I talk about realigning to secure attachment, that's very similar to what I'm talking about here, except this is on more of a spiritual energetic plane. But I can tell you this, your securely attached self is also really good at allowing, at knowing her worth and knowing that she already has this worthiness of love. Okay. So go practice these things. I'm so excited for you. I hope you enjoyed this meditation. I hope you enjoyed our woo woo video for today. All right. Sending you so much love. I'll see you next week. Bye everyone. 